All right, Ankit Jena. All right. So, uh, one important thing before we actually start, all you guys have you uh, accepted the invitation for the class, which I have sent on your email, Ankit? Have you accepted the invitation? Seven. Okay. All right, fine. Uh, then we can start. Fine. So yesterday I talked to you about float and double. And uh, you know the only difference between the float and the double is in terms of the size of the memory. All right. And what is the format specifier to print a floating point number? You all know that. And that's F. Yesterday we discussed. So the format specifier, which is used to output a double or a floating point number in the correct format, which is format places of decimal, having uh, numbers which are uh, have uh, you know places of decimal, they are uh, actually output using the percentage F access specifier. So if you have forgotten, percentage C was for character and percentage D was for integer. Okay, for both float and double, you have percentage F. So it's it's the same. All right, so let's look at uh, you know how you can represent a double or a floating point number into a, a notation which is normally used uh, in maybe we call it a scientific notation. So you know that when you have a number something as five thousand, it is also represented as five into ten to the power three. Do you know that? Right. Yes, you know this, right? So most of mo most yes, of the times when you use double and floating point numbers, you are using it for mathematical operations, for operations which involve a lot of scientific applications. All right. So in scientific notation, right, a number can be represented by the combination of two things. One is called as mantissa, and the other one is called as exponent. Important thing. One is the mantissa, the other one is exponent. So how is this represented? So in C, you have an option by which you can format a number in a scientific notation. Now, normally, this 5,000, which was written as 5 into 10 to the power 3, is also represented as 5 this or 5 this. OK, the meaning of this is same. That means what we are saying is 5 is the mantissa, and this part is the exponent. OK, so this 3 is the exponent. So 3 is the exponent, and 5 is the mantissa. So the representation of this number can be this, or it can be this. OK, both are same, right? Small e or capital E. This represents 3 rep represents the exponent. 3 represents the exponent. 5 represents the mantissa. All right. So we have to, how do we represent this in our C? OK. Now it's very simple. It's very simple. We need a access specifier for this. We need an access specifier. So what is the access specifier which will output my floating point number, right? using a scientific notation. So the access specifier that we can use is this or this. OK, so one is going to you know, output the value in terms of e to the power 3. The other one is going to output in terms of e to the power 3, so this. So you can either use this or you can this, use this. All right, so we will uh, look into this later. Because this we will finish basically the data types here itself. I have given you some brief when you when you are in the lab and then you are trying out some problems. You try to use percentage e and percentage e and see whether you can represent a floating point number in this uh, format. Okay, so that's what you need to do it in your lab. So uh, you know this would be the end of this uh, chapter on data types. A quick uh, introduction to data types, right? So what's important here is to understand what exactly is a data type. Second thing is to understand 
what exactly is the memory allocation for each of those data type also how the memory allocation is dependent on the compiler what is the difference between double and float what are the use of format specifiers okay so that's basically the end of this chapter now the next chapter we will talk a little bit about how you can handle the standard input and output okay so we will be discussing about some concepts of standard input and output now these concepts are not only related to c programming but you will find that when you study c++ and when you study other programming languages also these concepts are related okay there is a concept of streams right streams anybody knows what are streams in c++ you have stream classes if you have studied c++ you know you will know what are stream classes okay so a very important concept of streams is what we are going to study so we can probably start today and then we can continue with this in the next class so i'm just going to give you an introduction to what exactly is meant by a stream okay so i will try to discuss stream in terms of uh, the technical aspects of it and i also try and give you an analogy of what exactly a stream is okay now let's talk about a stream in a literal sense what is a stream in literal sense i'm not talking about programming i'm not talking about c++ or c or any uh, you know technical stuff here i'm talking about in normal english what is the literal meaning of a stream the spelling is incorrect s t r e a m what is a stream who is going to tell me what is a stream and i'm asking you for the literal meaning not asking you for a technical meaning and i know everybody knows it so who's going to tell me what's a stream so i want to ask what a stream is and what is the characteristics of a stream so who's going to tell me flow. what's a stream yes flow of something flow of something okay anyone sir. else come on so yes yes so uh, a narrow space a narrow space okay vivek vivek says it's a narrow space who else is going to tell me Kaishima. So stream, so stream also means streaming kind of, um, streaming kind of kind telecasting of something. Okay. Streaming. Telecasting something. Okay. Yes, Kaishima Das. Can you tell me what's a stream? Okay. Yeah. Are you saying something? Okay. Anybody I else? Said, real time Sorry. Sorry? Real time sharing. Uh, Yeah, I can hear you, uh, Shivraj. What are you saying? What's a stream? A small space. I can't hear you clearly. Sir, a small space. Okay, transmit or receive data. That's uh, somebody says on the chat. All right. So stream is nothing but it's a small river, isn't it? Stream is a river, isn't it? A small. narrow river yeah a narrow river a small river can be called as a stream normally streams are those small rivulets which actually flow down the mountain right so you have the mountain and what comes down is nothing but a stream so this is a stream so what is the characteristics of a stream what is the characteristic of a stream obviously stream carries something right it carries something that means what does a stream carry it carries water so you can have a water stream what is a water stream a water stream is a small river which carries water right now what is the second characteristic so a stream carries something okay it carries something in in literal sense it carries water right and there is another property can anyone tell me what is the second property of a stream no it, it it is always in it is always moving it is always moving so yes if it carries water it is moving any other character uh, characteristics come on all of you know it it's so it's so obvious 
but it's not coming into your mind yes sir it has a continuous flow okay it has a continuous flow okay yes any any other characteristics you all are right there but you are missing that point come on sir i know depth velocity sorry yes so flowing from up not uh, not uh, okay 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 somebody has uh, somebody has come to the point so that means a stream flows in one direction isn't it it flows in one direction so it flows from high up to the mountains and here is the ocean so it flows from the mountains to the ocean so there is one direction in which the stream flows all of you agree with me or have you seen a yes, river sir. which is flowing yes, this sir. side also and this side also yes sir no a river no, no, always no. flows in one direction all right so now why am i telling you about streams this is not an environmental class but you know whatever concepts are there in computer science have all been borrowed from things around us so stream it's very important to understand the properties of a stream because the same concept is utilized in programming it is utilized in the way we communicate so let's move all these points that we have discussed here so moving continuous flows carries all that's related to each other so what we can say is we can summarize this into two characteristics one it carries something it carries water and second moves in one direction okay so this is basically the meaning of the word stream now let's try to correlate this what we are going to study so first important thing here is my computer right so here's my computer so this is a keyboard and connected to your cpu and then sorry this is a cpu okay so i have a drive here and then this is a cpu and this is connected to a keyboard all right and the cpu is connected to a what is this this is a monitor right so this is basically your computer that you actually have it in your home the desktop desktop computer consists of your central processing unit which is your cpu inside that there is ram hard drive blah 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 and you have two wires which are connected with a keyboard and another wire is connected to your and there is another small thing which is a mouse here all right so this is how your computer looks like now where does your c program run so any programming that you write any programming language or any code that you write whether it's in c or it's java or anywhere is executed inside the cpu and all of you know this okay it's not rocket science you have, you know this now the important point so let's remove this let's remove this and in place of this let's write a program which is getting executed inside the cpu okay and let's make it more simple now if you look at this there are two important devices which are connected to your cpu and the cpu is where your program is running what kind of device is this your keyboard what kind of device is this this is sure. an input device right it's an input device what kind of device is your monitor the place where you see a photograph it's an output device Art absolutely Art so all of you know this now can we consider that this connection that we see here and this connection that we see here can we you know use an analogy and say that between the cpu that means or my program right there is a connection that means this connection is a stream so let's say there is a stream so here is a river between the output device and your cpu which is which is actually connected through a wire and we have another river which is another stream here which is connected to your cpu and your input 
So rather than CPU, I'm going to say program. So here is your main program, and your program is connected to an output device and connected to an input device through two different streams. Can I say that? Okay, let's see. Now the streams normally have two characteristics. One is it carries water and it flows only in one direction. So can we try and see whether if we say that these are connected using streams, do these characteristics hold true? So the first characteristics, a stream carries something. So do you think that this stream carries something? Do you think that this stream carries something? And if it carries, what is it carry? Data. Absolutely. So the first point is absolutely correct. That means this stream carries data. So this point is valid. What about the second? Do they flow the data? So in place of the water, the data is flowing in these streams. Now, second point, direction. Is the data flowing in one direction or it's like all over the place? Sir, one direction. One direction. One direction. So even the second, even the second characteristics of our stream holds good here. So what is the direction in which the river is flowing here? Can you tell me? Which direction is our data flowing? From so input to output. This, yes, this is the direction. Input to output. OK, and what is the direction in which the data is flowing here? Is this correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So basically, if you look at the river, it's flowing like this in one direction, right? And it is flowing in one direction. So the property, the second property also that the stream flows in one direction holds good. OK, perfect. So all of you are aware of this. Now, there are two different streams here. OK, there are two different streams that I have actually drawn on the piece of paper here. Now, one stream is called as the input stream, input stream, OK? And the other is called as the output stream. One of the stream is used for reading, OK? And the other is used for writing. Did you understand this? One is used for reading the data and the other one is using for writing the data now in c programming we have given names to this stream one is we have given names to this stream okay to this stream what are the names one is called as stdin this is the name of the river and the other river is stdout okay now, what is STDOUT and what is STDIN? Which one is STDOUT stream and which one is STDIN? Now, all of you know you have used printf, right? All of you have used printf. What do you do yes, in printf? What do you do in printf? So we print. We print some. So. <laughs> So basically, so, print the data, sir. Basically, to display. Okay, so you print you print the data on the monitor. Yes. So yes, in sir. the program, if you if you write printf, right? If you write printf, that means this printf is taking some data and it is putting into your monitor. Agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, yes, sir. this printf is a function which uses this stream which uses this stream to put the data into the monitor. And the name of that stream is STDOUT. So this stream is called as STDOUT, and this stream is called as STDIN. Do you understand this? So the meaning is that when I use printf, when I use printf, in my program to print something into the monitor, what the printf is doing is it is actually using this river to send the data from your program right to your monitor. So internally, it uses this river, this stream. What is the name of the stream given in a program, given in C? 
the name of that stream is standard output stream what is the river or the stream which the input device uses to transfer the data or make the data flow from here to here that stream is your standard input stream okay so how do you define input so if you look at it it's a standard output and a standard input stream now how do you define the input and output so you define the input and output by looking at that program by looking at this program so in this program i need input data so where is the input data coming it's coming from here okay so this is the input data so the data is flowing from here and it is getting inside this program so here the data is getting input into a program so the stream which brings the data is called as standard input stream here from the program the data is going out into a stream the data is going out into a stream so this stream in which the data comes out of your program is called as the standard output stream did you understand this concept of stream now what exactly is this stream okay i'm going to explain it to you now in c++ this stream is implemented like a file the stream is implemented like a file just imagine now i'm just uh, suppose this is your monitor this monitor is connected to a file and this file is connected to a program right and this file is nothing but a river why how why it's a river because whatever the contents of a file that this program places here this file is the contents of the file is straight away moved into the monitor so basically the implementation of a stream in case of your c is through a file but in order to visualize or understand what exactly is a stream just think of it that there is a pipe connection between these two how that pipe is implemented that's through a file but in order to understand what's a stream think of it as a pipe so there is a pipe in which the data flows and that pipe is connected from the program into the output device and the name of the file is pipe is your std out and similarly there's another pipe which connects your keyboard or your standard input devices to your program and the name of that pipe is standard input did you understand this much yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah yes sir very good now this concept is not only connected to c okay when we talk about c++ we also have streams there but in that case the streams are not implemented uh, by files or anything if the streams are implemented by something called as classes okay so you have stream classes there so when you study c++ or if you already know c++ you will realize uh, this but for now we all need to worry about the fundamentals of programming so stream classes or streams what are streams and uh, we are trying to understand the standard input and output streams here okay now in c there are three streams actually one you understood that is stdin so this is one pipe there is another pipe which is std o u t and you know this also right and there is another pipe what is that another pipe that another pipe is called as std e r r okay now sometimes have you noticed that when you don't run or if you are running a program and if you don't use printf still you will find that if there are some problems in your program the display comes on to your monitor saying that this is your error or this is your warning right even without running a program there are some information which is sent from your program all the way to your monitor those information are your error messages those information are your warning messages right suppose there is an error in your code then the code will not execute but there will be a message displayed on the screen that there is an error the variable has been has not been defined or anything like that right now for all the error messages there is a separate pipe through which the data flows now that is called as your std err okay so std err and std out these are two streams which are connected to your monitor that means from your main program the pipe is connected to your monitor 
but stdin is a stream which is connected to your keyboard so basically this is an input stream and both these are some a form of output streams okay did you understand this yes sir yes sir okay now, yes sir now the basic underlying concept of your user input and output are through these streams now there are different functions available in c now you will understand why those functions are there and what is the use why they operate and how they operate now we already know that there is a function called as printf right now this printf is a function which uses some kind of implementation to which has some kind of logic by which whatever you give in its parameter in its inside its uh, you know you send it as an input to its parameter that will be displayed on to your standard output device which is nothing but your monitor so in order to do that it has to take the service of the std out river or the stream okay so in order to print anything using printf you have to use this channel you have to use this stream which is the stream standard output all right now not only printf but there are some other functions also so if you have already studied c before you must be aware of the get c function you must be aware of the put c function you must be aware of another function called get char and you must be also aware of another function called put char now these are some functions which also uses those streams the standard input and standard output streams okay so other than your printf there are some other functions also which use the standard input and the standard output streams sir just a so, question sir get yes. sir get c and get ch are two different functions two different terms na no, sir yeah get c and get char are two different functions but they do the same thing so okay. basically we use get ch to hold the screen so no, get, is it get, that get no no get ch is something else get ch is something okay, else okay sir yeah i'm asking that point basically not get Thank ch you. i'm talking about get char get c put c and put char get ch is something else okay so i will i will tell you what get ch and all that so today we will uh, you know stop here because i will discuss what these functions are in the next class okay but what is important uh, in today's class what you learned was is what are streams now this is a very important concept okay most of the people will straight away jump into get c put c printf and they will not tell you about what exactly is stream so then later on when you start doing advanced level programming that's where the problem will arise because you don't have any knowledge of streams you are only used to printing the data onto the screen by using uh, printf but you don't know the internals of how that data is flowing and what exactly is being used okay how what exactly which file which channel is being used in order to transmit that data all the way you know to that particular output or input device all right now before we end i just like to uh, give you a small implementation details about uh, this streams okay now in c++ everything happens through a file everything happens through a file okay now if you look at a stream it is nothing but a collection of data right stream is nothing but a collection of data so if you have 10 10 10 10 10 doesn't this look like a pipe through which the data is flowing so obviously when i talk about a stream it's not something that we are physically laying a pipe okay if you can represent the data in one and zero in a you know sequence then we can visualize this as a stream so when i say that there is a the stream input and output stream in c is implemented using a file we can consider a file as a stream because inside a file you can store data isn't it you can store data so just imagine 
that suppose I have a pipe which I'm talking about. So this is a pipe, right? Which is connected to two devices. And this pipe is my stream. And what actually happens inside this? What exactly happens inside this? Data flows, right? So where is the data? So here is my data. Say this is my data, OK? This is my binary data, which is flowing inside this pipe. This is nothing but like water, which is flowing between two different devices. So this is basically how a stream would you know, look like. But now in C++, in C, I told you that a stream is implemented using a file. Now, this information that you have can be also easily stored inside a file. Now, say I create a file. And in this file, I write this 10101010101 this way. OK. Now, this file can be connected using a program this way. So this is basically a stream. So when we talk about stream in C, we are basically talking about a file. But to understand exactly what this file is, think about it as a channel. OK. So the program can read from this file, and it can also write into a file. So when you're doing file handling, the stream becomes very, very important. Understanding file handling in any programming language requires you to have a knowledge about stream. Now, a file contains related characters and numbers, because all the characters and numbers are represented in bits on a computer. And you know a byte is a series of bits. So the C language treats file as a series of bytes. OK, so we can say that this is one byte, this is another byte, and this is another byte. So in C language, a file is treated as a series of bytes. OK, so what we actually see in a file, like 10101010, this is how we see a file. But a C programming language does not see this file like this, but it sees that same file as like this, where each one of this is one byte. OK, so this is how the C program visualizes a file. And this is how we visualize the same file. So did you understand? So this city, did you understand this? Yes, sir. OK. So what we can do is we can, we can say that the series of bytes, the series of bytes is a stream. So since the C program visualizes a file as a series of bytes, it actually represents a channel. So this is how the C program visualizes. But we can represent or we can visualize this as a file which contains lots of bits, which the C program visualizes as you know a series or sequence of bytes. Now, what we are talking about a stream is nothing but a file which the computer language is visualizing it to be like a channel consisting of different bytes: one byte, two byte, third, third byte, fourth byte. So you have four bytes of data flowing between two different devices. OK, now the C language treats all file streams equally. Right, although some of the file streams may come from a disk or you know tape drive, from a terminal, from a printer. So now when you talk about input and output, you know, it, it is not only uh, you know, a keyboard, it is not only a monitor, because sometimes if you want to print something onto your printer, then you have to send the print request not to the monitor. So in that case, there will be another file, another channel. All right, another channel through which the data will be sent to your printer. So this channel is nothing but a stream. So obviously, when you look at a programming language, if you want to print onto a monitor, then you will use the standard input output stream. If you want to use the output as a printout if you want to print the output into a paper then you have to send you have to send that information or that data to a printer so the channel that you will be using or the stream that you will be using will be different from your standard input output okay similarly if you are using your keyboard to enter some information then you'll be using the standard input stream 
but if you are using another de device if you are using a touch pad or if you are using a some sophisticated uh, you know input device then your stream will not be your standard input and output stream it will be another channel or it will be another stream did you understand did you all understand this yes sir yes sir okay okay yeah fine so uh, we will keep it at uh, this today because in tomorrow's class i will uh, cover the these four different functions very briefly and what i will also explain tomorrow is how you can do some kind of formatting okay how you can do something some uh, kind of formatting with your out your out character like when you okay so when you are trying to print something for example we will revisit the printf function and then we will try and see how we can use some kind of formatting also there so how we can uh, format with spaces how we can you know uh, do some kind of uh, specify the field width and all that stuff we will do tomorrow and uh, we can also align the output right you can align uh, left align right align so we will quickly uh, you know uh, in a very fast way we will learn some of the techniques in which we can format the output okay so we will cover that tomorrow so today's class ends here if you have any queries you can quickly ask because another class is starting soon so otherwise we will stop here any queries no sir no sir no sir no sir sure okay no, fine then you guys can all log out and go for the next class and we will meet again tomorrow see you okay sir okay. thank you thank you sir bye 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 bye